Okay, I just rewatched that video and uh, realized I left some things out. A um, couple of things is I wanted to talk about. Um, first off was uh, that you do, when, when, this is the original bearing that was in it. It's not a sealed bearing. And uh, I, I elected to use the sealed bearing that I, that I purchased. And uh, when you use a sealed bearing, um, you do not have to replace, I'll put this piece back on this cap that goes over that, that goes over the bearing and is riveted in. So I elected, elected to leave this off, otherwise I would have had to go find rivets and, uh, and, uh, and re-rivet that on um, there. The other thing, the other, so uh, sealed bearing, and the bearing that I, uh, I chose was an SKF uh, 6205, um, and there's the rest of the number there. Um, so I did replace the bearing, uh, although there was, didn't seem to be any wear in it. It seemed to be fine. One of the things I noticed about these parts is that they all look in very good shape. So I think this was recently, uh, this guy was recently rebuilt um, by the previous owner. I have no idea, but I went ahead and replaced the bearing. When I got to the bushing, I put an um, internal digital caliper on this bushing and on the new one. The replacement one and on the uh, and on the on the one that goes uh, goes in here um, and I found that they, they, they were virtually identical and I and I put the um, armature in there and I and I and, and I tried to wiggle it it seemed good and tight I elected to leave it in there the reason is um, that to get that out you need to put a you put a tap into it and thread it and then sort of bolt into it, pull it out. That's one way people do it. Uh, I don't have a tap that size. The other way is they take this piece out, drill this piece out and, t and drive it out or get a blind um, bushing puller. I had none of those. I liked it. I'll, I'm just not going to hassle with it. I'll just leave it in there. It seems to be really in good shape. The other thing I elected to do is not put new... Um, new um, brushes in it because the brushes that were in it were very close. They, they're hardly anywhere at, it, at all. They may be, may be worn about that much. I said, why, why, you know, I'll just save these, put them on the shelf and save them for later. So those were some choices I made. The other thing that happened that I wanted to document was in putting this, um, th this nut back on, the, uh, th th there, this nut would just barely clear there and and it, it, there wasn't enough of this this left that I felt comfortable with to put this uh, put that lock washer under there so I didn't and I elected instead to use Loctite on that instead uh, and I thought well maybe this is out of line maybe it's not um, writing correctly Maybe the, maybe the armature is not sitting in there properly spaced and uh, so I did one last check and I checked uh, to see whether or not the inside, and I don't know if you can see that, uh, whether or not the brushes, um, and I have to turn it, um, whether or not the brushes were riding on the, uh, uh, riding in the in the proper space uh, on the, on there, and the brushes are sitting right properly where they, where they belong. It's hard to see in the video, but they're sitting right in the groove. So as far as I'm concerned, it's writing and this is writing in the right place, respective. And some, this generator has been worked on. Maybe you noticed in the other video, there's a, a weld going right across here. I actually had to grind that away a little bit because the fan wasn't quite, uh, wasn't quite clearing. I had, I had straightened the fan up when I, when I painted it and it actually uh, uh, ground on it so anyway I wanted to document those things about it the other thing I got to do now is I'm going to repolarize it uh, according to the directions um, uh, before I in install it um, oh one other thing as far as how to tighten this uh, this nut how to hold this I imagine you could put this in a vise or something I didn't want to do that I find a strap wrench that I have from plumbing to be really handy and by putting the wrench on one side and the socket on the other I was able to tighten it up just fine. 
I think I covered everything I wanted to remember about this. Uh, glad to have this done. Okay, um, there's a lot of conversation about polarizing a generator and regulator and so on. Um, but in any case, we need to test it. So in order to test it, I've got myself a battery. I have a positive ground car. So my positive is on the ground of the, uh, of the um, generator. I've connected, I've connected the, uh, the D and the F terminals there with a piece of ground wire from a 115 volt cord. And uh, I'm, I'm using, excuse me, I'm using a, a piece of cardboard to insulate the, uh, the clamp against, uh, hold on, let me put this back on. Um, insulate my clamp so that it's not in any way, shape, or form going to touch the ground. I gotta set the camera down. There we go. Apologies. So uh, I use a piece of cardboard to, to as insulation between there. So there's no way with the vibration that this clamp can touch ground. So the idea here is that a generator is just a motor that's spun, and the generator should um, run in the direction of the uh, of the arrow here, the direction it turns when the car is on. Now, what they did at the factory apparently was they uh, ran them for 20 minutes to bed in the brushes. I've heard that people say this is really ridiculous. You might as well just let the car running of the car bed in the brushes. Um, but I'm just doing this to test it. It was running, fi working fine when I when I took it off and redid it. Um, I'm just I secured it in a clamp or in a vise to keep it nice and firm. So I'm going to go ahead and connect it up. And we see that it runs just fine. It's running clockwise. Uh, what you're seeing is the uh, is the effect of the lights. But it is it, it looks like in the camera that it's running counterclockwise, but it is in fact running clockwise. I think the strobe of the fluorescence is causing that to uh, to happen. But it sounds just fine. Uh, everything looks good. Um, looks like a successful rebuild. So we'll go ahead and. Uh, and undo it and you can see now that it's running in the in the proper direction so and i wouldn't do it from this side because uh, actually you're gonna you might get in the way of this but the uh, one thing you uh, that you do want to watch for and i caught it uh, before i started it was you want to make sure this fan clears everything in here and in fact that collar that i put on it i discovered it as a reading another website that that's part of a i didn't see that in any uh, diagrams that's part of a service kit and the service kit the idea of the service kit is that is to check the gap between the fan and the um the the, the fan and the and the housing here and you put that you put that spacer in there in order to set your your gap here and that's what must somebody must have put that in after the fact and that's why I have one. Anyway, um, it's done. Yay.